So another area where we need to have this kind of resistance at, at the local and state levels as, as well as at the federal level is in the educational field, particularly regarding this, this monstrosity and abomination called Common Core. And Kathy Irvine is here to discuss that one with us. Kathy? Yes. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be speaking about Common Core, and I'm not sure if anybody out there really knows what it is. And I know I didn't hear about it until like two months ago. And when I looked into it, it, it was unbelievable. It's nothing but the nationalization of our education in schools. Anyway, I'll continue on. Um, what is Common Core? It's a nation, national curriculum standard and a federal, federal program of data tracking personal information on students. The original goal when it was implemented was to bring all of the curriculum in the United States and align it, just align the educational system so that everybody was in the same books and everybody was in the same, you know, looking at the same material throughout the U.S. And then I think it's really important that we know how Common Core was developed because there's a lot to learn from this. Um, in two, between 2008 and 2010, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation provided $35 million to a consortium of two non-government trade associations. That was the National Gover Governors Association and the Council of Chief State Officers. And the purpose of this was to develop a new education system, and they called it Common Core State uh, Standard Initi Initiative, and it was published in 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, the American Reinvestment and uh, Recovery Act that Obama signed in uh, February 2009, which is a stimulus bill, he designated $4.5 billion Earmark, executive earmark for the Department of Education with no strings attached. The Department of Education funded Race to the Top to uh, cash strap states who competed for this money, but they had to commit to adopt the standard. Uh, the result of this scheme was that no review was given by the people or legislators, including Michigan. Uh, states were given two months to commit after this publication, and they adopted sight unseen instructional standards. Sounds familiar. Kind of like Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> you have to read it to know what's in it. Um, and then uh, 42 states committed without state legislative approval. House Speaker John Boyner, in April of 2011, included $700 million in a new race to the top earmark for the Department of Education. What we end up with is loss of local control plus loss of state control equals national run schools. The broader plan is for the FRED, the federal government, to track your children from birth to participation in the workforce. The 2009 stimulus package included funds to construct data, a data collection system. Uh, the federal government will, uh, data will track test scores, health, immunization, social security numbers, religious affiliations, voting status, blood types, bus stop times, dwelling arrangements, hair and eye color, weight, dental status, and over a hundred other points of personal data on your children. In uh, February 2013, the Department of Education announced a new, new monitoring, monitoring techniques, which include MRI brain mapping functions, cameras to judge facial expressions, electronic seats to judge their posture, Pressurized computer mouse biometric wrist wraps, <laughs> finger printing, iris patterns, and voice print, and then the last DNA sequences. 
All this tracking is going to be collected in state data and placed in a national, federally funded consortium. The centralized database is an alliance between Bill Gates and In Bloom. The purpose of this data is to make decisions about their educational path and align them with the workforce. No parental rights are given to parents with, for the data, and they are changed to the federal level through <coughs> executive regulation. Despite the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, the Obama administration paved the way for private entities to buy this data. Race to the Top was nothing but a gimmick. It, it was an extension of um, No Child Left Behind, and um, it de-emphasizes all literature. It eliminates classics, like, like Catcher in the Rye and things like that, and, and they're replacing it with EPA manuals, and it's crazy. It lowers the reading and math skills, and science classes emphasize climate change. And they've rewritten history, as we witnessed for years. <coughs> the usual sus suspects in this dangerous, unconstitutional system are Obama, of course, Bill and Melinda Gates, Arne Duncan, who was the CEO of Ch Chicago Public Schools and friend of Obama, who's now our uh, Secretary of at the Department of Education, and um, Bill Ayers, who we are pretty much, <laughs> believe me. Uh, Common Core is based on the United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development and Destination Education is what it is. In Oakland County, Common Core is being actively implemented um, in our schools at this time. Um, they, at this point, uh, they are, they focus on math and English, and they'll be including the science and, um, I believe, the history next year. But they have to have their data system in place by 2014. And that estimated cost is going to be about $3.6 billion for Michigan taxpayers on top of the other, what we're paying already. Um, thank God for this man. Um, State Representative Tom McMillan included an amendment um, to the Farm Common Court in the Department of Education budget. It was just, just last week, and it passed in the House, and now it's going to go to uh, the Senate. And at the end of May, they're going to be voting on this again, and it's really important that you contact your state senators so that they defund this. And it, it's only defunded for one year. So as a result of that, um, st now State uh, Representative Tom McMillan, he's introduced HB 4276. And I passed out some sheets on that. And this bill would permanently defund Common Core. Um, from the <laughs> Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx said, I think this is good to keep this in mind, the education of all children from the moment they can get along without their mother shall be in state institutions at the state's expense. It's really, really important if you're a parent or a grandmother as I am, I have five little kids, school-age grandkids, and to me, I mean, it, I'm fighting for their liberty. And when I look at what is happening in this country, it's really important that we all get involved within our cities and uh, county. Contact your, your state representatives. Contact them. They listen. And not only that, um, go to your school board meetings. We need to be active. We need to know what's going on and let them know that you're opposed to all of this, because it's terrible. Anyway, thank you.